Welcome back to the Sweet Life channel where we talk about giving ourselves a raise and living our sweet life by being smart. And I know you're smart because you're watching this video. <laughs> so let's get started. Today I'm taking you through my 10 step process of how I analyze a stock and actually look under the hood. If you ever found yourself in this position where maybe you were looking at something or you're watching some YouTuber and they say, hey, this is a stock you gotta buy because it's dipping in price. Buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the bloody dip because the share price looks good. And that can sometimes be awesome, but here's the problem with that. Let's say all of a sudden a stock is worth 20 bucks and it drops down to $10 and you're excited. Buy an opportunity, right? Go all in, buy it, buy it, buy the dip. And then what happens is your hope is it's gonna go back up to $20 or even better, it'll go above $20 to 30, 40, $50. But then you find yourself in this weird position. You bought in at $10 and it just kind of stays there. How frustrating and annoying is that? You bought the dip, but it like stayed in the dip. It like got caught in the Grand Canyon. I threw a lot of money into this. Or worse yet, it gets worse. It goes down, let's say it drops to $5. And then you're giving yourself that talk of that age old, terrible, terrible talk of, should I cut my losses and just sell it? But there's a better way to do this. Just because the share price looks good does not mean the company's good. What we're gonna do is we're gonna look under the hood through a 10 step process I use before I ever consider buying a stock. To make this make sense, let's talk about it like a car. I said it before, but I gotta say it again. You see this beautiful, pristine, sexy looking car. You gotta have it. It's like the best freaking car. It's like your dream car. It's on an ultimate freaking deal and you're so excited. Like you're blown up. So you're going all in because you're like, this looks beautiful. This is my dream car. Oh my God. Are you for real on this price? You buy it, you drive it home, you're enjoying it for a week and then you find yourself stuck on the road. And sure, you look sexy stuck on the side of the road because it's a sexy looking car and you're a sexy looking person. <laughs> but it kind of sucks because you're late for work and you're stuck on the side of the road while everybody stares at you as they're driving by. Got attracted to the price, got attracted to the car, forgot to look under the hood and realize that the engine was starting to rust. And it rusted through that next week to the point where it shut down the car. Yeah, that's what happens when you chase the share price. And you know I like dividends too, right? Do you like dividends? Every time you buy a dividend stock, you give yourself a raise. It's pretty cool because they pay you just for simply owning shares of the stock. But if you only chase just the dividend yield and you think, oh, this company pays a beautiful dividend yield. They have a great share price and a great dividend yield. It's the same thing. The share price is the engine, which rusted out. The dividend yield is the wheels. And if you buy into it just based on the dividend yield and you forgot to notice that the wheels were about ready to fall off, you trap yourself into this position that you don't wanna be in. So I wanna tell you how to look under the hood of the car, check the engine out to make the best informed decision for you. Now, none of this is financial advice and I don't recommend buying or selling any stock, but I wanna give you the tools so you can do your own research and consult your own financial advisor with a little bit more knowledge. I wanna make you powerful because you deserve it. So if you're ready to get started and learn some cool things today, tap the like button down below and let's get started. Now, of course, in good nature, I'm gonna take you through all 10 steps while at some points sharing my iPad screen and taking you through how to actually analyze a stock. Let me pick one that you may all be familiar with to make it easy. Oh, let's see here. Who made this pencil? Oh, Apple. I have an Apple pencil and there's an Apple watch. We're gonna analyze Apple. Ticker symbol, A-A-P-L, just to make it easy. 10 smart steps. Because you're smart, we're gonna go over 10 things that I look at. First smart step is about dividends, right? Now, if the company doesn't pay dividends, and some stocks don't, you can skip over the first step. But if you're looking for a dividend stock and A-A-P-L does pay a dividend, you wanna check the payout ratio. That is smart step number one. Now you might say, well, Bob, what the heck is a payout ratio? The payout ratio basically lets you know how much profits they're paying out to their shareholders in the form of dividends and other things like that. Now, the higher the payout ratio, especially if it's over 100%, it basically means that they're paying a percentage of its business profits to shareholders in the form of cash above and beyond the 100% of profit that it earned, which means it's dipping into things like funds outside of profits, debt, and so on in order to pay out that dividend. And of course, a very low payout ratio, in fact, uh, spoiler alert, kind of what we'll see here today in Apple, could mean that they're taking a lot of their profits and reinvesting it in the business. Now that kind of makes sense for something like Apple who continuously puts out new products and new innovation year after year. So I'd like to look for something kind of in the middle. I don't want too high, I don't want too low, something in the middle 
or if I don't really care if it's really low, like in the case of Apple, I wanna make sure there's consistency over the long period of time. So let me pull up the iPad screen. Here we go. We're gonna go on to seekingalpha.com free website to use, and I typed in the ticker symbol AAPL, and that brings us to Apple Incorporated. You can see the share price, AKA the car, is $125.43. Now, let's look under the hood. In order to find the payout ratio, I hop over to this tab right here that says dividends. Click on that, I'm gonna zoom out, and I'm gonna go down to the bottom here to where it says payout ratio. Look at that, 17.05%. That is actually pretty darn good with a dividend yield of only 0.70. Again, this is a company that takes a lot of its profits and reinvest it into its future innovations. I don't really have a problem with that because I understand Apple, but there you go, 17.05%. And now what I do under each smart step is I give it a rating based on a traffic light. You got red, which means not good. You got yellow, which means it's either or, or a green light. In this case, payout ratio gives Apple a green light in smart step number one. Let's move on to the next thing I look at, which is the second smart step, and that is PE ratio. PE ratio, that stands for price to earnings ratio, in case you were wondering. Now, a lot of people will say, ah, that's not the best way to analyze a company, but remember, there's 10 smart steps. Don't put all your focus on just one smart step. There could be a lot of green and a lot of red, but there's only one of the 10. PE ratio, price to earnings. So how do you find this out? You take the share price and you divide that share price by the earnings per share. That's what gives you the PE ratio. Now, a historical average of PE ratio is around 15 to 16. If you look for things less than 20, this could help you understand that the company has runway to continue to grow its share price. So let's pull up Seeking Alpha again, and we're gonna go over to where it says summary here for Apple. And once that loads, we're gonna go over to the right-hand side of the graphical chart, and right here it is, a PE ratio of 24.3. So as I said, you know, it's good to look for something 20 or less, although I will say a 24 is not bad. Compared to something like Tesla, that's pretty darn low for an innovation company. I'm okay with that, 24.3. Third smart step is earnings per share versus the estimates. What I wanna know is I wanna see how the earnings per share are going up against the typical estimates. I will first look on the main screen of Seeking Alpha. In fact, let's pull that up right now. And I'm going to start on the summary page and scroll down and scroll down and scroll down until I see this blue and black chart. The black line represents the estimates for earning per share. The blue line represents what the actual earnings per share were. So of course, in any company, you want your earnings per share actuals to be higher than the estimates or at minimum, meet them. If it goes under the estimates, you need to understand why. Now, of course, for a lot of companies, the pandemic was a good reason why. But outside of that, let's say it was a couple years ago or current or in the future, you got to look under the hood a little bit more. Well, why is that earnings per share less than what we estimated? What happened? And am I okay with what happened? Remember, you're the owner of this company now. If you buy a share of Apple, you own Apple, which means you expect your company to be pretty badass. And if it's not, you need to really understand why it's not. If you look here, of course, this is a pretty obvious example of something that's great. Look at the blue lines. They're well above the black lines. And if you touch on each one of them, it'll let you know how that result actually was. The estimate for quarter two 2021 was 99 cents of earnings per share, and the actual came out at $1.40. Now, I also look not only at quarterly, but I come up here and I click on annual as well because I wanna see how is this progressing over the long period of time. So we have now from September 2016 all the way up to current, and let's take a look here. So we beat uh, just by two pennies, but that's okay in 2016. 2017 looks good, 2018 looks good, 2019 looks good, everything looks great. For earnings per share versus estimates, so Apple in this particular example gets a green light. The fourth smart step is looking at the news. Now you gotta take this one with a little bit of a grain of salt, but it is good to look at the news to make sure that the company is matching what your standards are, what your values are. Are there things going on in the company that you appreciate? Or if there's something you don't, that might be a, a signal to say, hey, I need to reevaluate if I wanna continue business with this particular company as an investor. Now, I think a good example would be something like Disney. So let's say, for example, Disney decides to invest in a large scale operation of building more theme parks. Now you're gonna probably see more debt, potentially more fluctuation on their balance sheet, 
for the capital expenditures that it's gonna take in order to build more parks. But if you understand that the new parks could potentially increase their revenue, and with that, their profitability over the next five to 10 years after the theme park opens, this could be a good time to get in on future expanding operation. Now with news, you gotta be careful. Take a step back for a moment and look at this logistically, right? You can't just say, oh, okay, this sounds good. I'm gonna get all in without keeping an eye on what actually is happening. And even for that perspective, let's say Disney builds a park, but it's a complete flop. You will know that as you continue to look under the hood of the car. Is the revenue, is the earning per share meeting your expectation, meeting the analyst ratings, meeting the estimates? If it is, that could be potentially a good thing. If not, it's time to do some more research to see what your next move is gonna be with a particular company. Smart step number five, we're gonna talk about revenue growth. And for revenue growth, I'm gonna take us back to the good old Seeking Alpha, and it's actually located right above the earnings per share document. What we're looking for is generally an upward trend. We want it to go up over the period of time. For this, I don't focus too much on quarterly, I focus on annually. Every year is the company that I'm interested in becoming an owner of, AKA an investor, is it going up in revenue price? Let's take Apple for an example. Okay, so back in September 2016, they had a $215 billion revenue, followed up by 229, 265, 260, so it went down a little bit here in 2018, and it kind of flattened down in 2019, and then we saw an increase in 2020. So what I do, just to make it a little bit easier, I'm looking at the last year, that I possibly can, which is typically about five years away, to the current year. So if I look at September 2016, we have a $215 billion revenue, followed up by a 274. In this case, Apple gets a green light. That is increasing the overall revenue. Not too bad. That was kind of easy, wasn't it? Look for revenue that continues to grow. Number six. Smart step number six is all about your profit margin. Of course, you can make all the revenue in the world, but if you are terrible with how you manage that revenue, well, you're gonna be set up for some serious, serious failure. That's why we gotta look at profit margin. Well, what is profit margin? Simply what that is, taking the net income of the company and dividing it by that total revenue. That gives you the profit margin. Now, typically, I like to see things that are greater than 10%. Higher profit margin, 10% or more. That's what I like to see. So how do we do this with what we know here on Apple? Well, I'm gonna hop back over to the website. You can see right here, the revenue for September 2020 was 274 billion. I'm actually gonna take my calculator here on my iPhone just to make that easy. But the very first thing we need to discover is the net income. So I'm gonna scroll down here. I'm gonna scroll to the top of Seeking Alpha, I'm gonna click on the Financials tab right there. Tap on that, and then we're gonna go, once it loads up, we're gonna go over to where it has the cash flow. Click on cash flow, and then right near the top here, you're gonna see the net income. So I'm gonna take the very last year that I can, which is right over here, 57, 57, 411. Now that's in millions, so that's actually 57 billion 411 million. That's really what that comes down to, but that's what I'm taking there, 57.4. Now what I'm gonna do, just to remind myself, I can hop back over here to the income statement located right there, tap on that, and that'll take us back to what we were just looking at with the revenue. But let's go over here just to remind ourselves, okay, 274 billion. So we take that 57411 divided by 274515, that equals a 20.9% profit margin. That is pretty good, which means Apple gets another green light. Boy, I should have picked a crappy company to give you a good example of. But anyway, uh, again, I'm not recommending Apple. Don't take that. I'm just kind of showing you my process for, for doing a uh, stock analysis. And again, Apple is a popular company everybody knows about. But I'll tell you, that is pretty good. Anything 10% or greater is personally what I look for. It's up to you what you decide you wanna do. You could be happy with a profitability of 5% or more, especially if it's a company that you think has a long-term trajectory, so they're doing a lot of capital expenditure, they're going kinda of crazy, but you have a good feeling about them, you could lower that estimate. 10% is just something I look for. Seventh, smart step. Assets versus liabilities. Now you can find this on the balance sheet of any company. With assets versus liabilities, you want the company to have more cash available if needed. And just like your own bank account, you want their balance sheet to have more assets than they do liabilities. 
Now, there might be some companies that have more liabilities if they carry a lot of inventory, get like a store or something like that. But just do your research to understand the company to see if they're getting themselves into too much liability over debt. All right, let's take a look at Apple and see what they got going on here in the world of Seeking Alpha. I'm gonna go over here to the balance sheet, still under the financial tab. Click on balance sheet and we'll let it load. And then we're gonna be looking for first the assets right down here where it says total assets. Now they have it all kind of broken out. If you're interested in all the little micro details, that's totally up to you to look through all that. You have the current assets, long-term assets, and then total assets. So if I look at the total assets of the company, I'm gonna scroll over here, $323 billion. I'm gonna plug that into my calculator here on my uh, iPhone just to make sure that I plug that in. So it's 323-888, all right? And then we're gonna come down here to where we have the total liabilities, right there it is, total liabilities. Scroll over here to where we're at, and there she is at 258549. Well, I can already tell, cause you know, it's not hard to do that math, that we are positive by $65 billion. Not bad. So another green light for Apple in this case, but you always wanna say, do our assets equal more than our liabilities? So for example, let's say that, uh, just to make it easy, if you look at your own personal balance sheet, let's say you have a bunch of stuff, right? You got a house, you have some land, whatever, you got some investments, you add all that up, and then you take any debt you have. Maybe you have a mortgage, you have credit card debt, you have student loans. Basically, you take what you own, minus out what you owe, that equals your net worth. Same thing here, we wanna make sure that their assets minus their liabilities equals positive. Because if it's not, yeah, it's something to worry about, something to be concerned about. Maybe that green light goes to a yellow light, depending on what the company's up to. Or if it's a long established company that's not investing in anything, it's not producing any further innovation, that could be a red light. This brings us on to the eighth smart step, and that's your ownership potential. Ownership potential means how much you can own in a company. Let me just explain it a little bit more. The metric is measured by the number of shares outstanding. This means how many shares of stock are out there amongst all the various groups of people that can own the shares of the stock. So you wanna see those outstanding shares to be the same or decreasing year over year. Think of it this way. There's 1,000 shares outstanding in company A and you own 100 shares of company A. That means you own 10% of the company, 10% of the shares. But if they decide to increase their shares outstanding to let's say 2,000, now you only own 5% of the company. I don't know about you, but that's kind of weak, right? You want to own as much as you can. You want to have as much power as ownership of that company. That's what this particular eighth smart step is all about, your ownership potential. But why would a company increase their shares outstanding? So they can issue more shares outstanding to get more acquisitions, right? But they can also buy back shares. So if they get a lot of profit, a lot of free cash flow, they can use that to turn around to buy back shares. That increases your ownership and that is a good business technique. So just something that uh, is really important, I think, for your ownership is potential long-term. Now, how we find that, of course, Seeking Alpha, right there in the balance sheet where we last left off. I'm gonna scroll down here, and what you are looking for is you're looking for the total common shares outstanding. There they are. See that right there, total common shares outstanding. And then I'm going to look across the board. So we got 21, 20, 19, 17, 16. Hello, Apple, you're kicking butt and taking names because you got yourself another green light. As you can see, that's going down. That's awesome. A lot of times I see uh, these outstanding shares are usually very flat. Wow, we're getting down to the final two. Guys, if you're enjoying this content, if this is helpful to you, so you can live your future sweet life, so you can give yourself a raise as it says back there, please do me a favor, just tap the like button. This does help the video. This takes a lot of work just to put this together and I hope it is valuable to you so we together can build our portfolios and be a little bit smarter about how we do what we do. Ninth smart step. The ninth one is free cash flow. Now, free cash flow is super, super important. We wanna see free cash flow growth, obviously. And how we do that is we calculate it by taking the cash from operations minus capital expenditures. And free cash flow can be used for things like dividends paid out to us as shareholders and even share buybacks. They can also use this for future acquisitions as well. We wanna continue to see future free cash flow growth. 
Let's take a look again at our buddy Apple. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here. Again, we're on the cash flow statement right here under financials, and we're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom. And then you're looking for leverage free cash flow, okay? You can look at both of these actually, levered and unlevered if you want, look at both of these columns. But uh, let's take a look here. So we have 44, 39, 47, 42, 60, 80. Now, there's a little bit of fluctuation going on here, guys. We have some ups and downs, um, but you can see, especially in the last year, in 2020, maybe because of the pandemic and people staying at home and getting more Apple products, that is a nice, significant increase. But then we have a little bit of a dip here from 47 to 42, maybe not enough, but I'll say, guys, I'm gonna give this one a yellow light, even though I wanna give it a green light because technically on the whole, it does make sense to me, but I kinda wanna make sure that we're in an upward trajectory when it comes down to free cash flow. I have 39, 47, 42. So it's, it's a little bit like up and down and then it really spikes up in 2020. If they can continue that, this, this yellow light could easily be a green light, no doubt. No doubt at all. Or at least just maintain, you know, maybe let's maintain that 60 for another couple of years, another couple of quarters, that would be great. So I think we have like all green lights except for the ninth, which is a yellow light. So yeah. Let's go on to the 10th smart step. I like to look at price versus cash flow. Now, what you wanna look at is really, this helps you understand if a company could potentially be undervalued and if its stock is relatively cheap compared to the free cash flow. And this is important when it comes down to what I mentioned at the very beginning of this video of people that chase only the share price. Let me give you a great example here on, on Apple stock here. So if I go up here to the top, 125.43. If I'm going to sit there and say, I'm going to buy if it hits 115 a share, or I'm going to buy if it goes back below 100, that means I'm doing something I hate doing, which is timing the market. I'm waiting to see what happens with Apple, and only if it hits under 100, I'm going to buy. I mean, that is a strategy. I'm not going to lie, I've used it before. But man, is that annoying and stressful because every day, almost every second, especially if it's getting close to that under $100 price point that I set, I have to hawk this thing like a beast. I gotta have all my eyes on that price point and hope that, oh, oh, is it gonna happen? Is it gonna happen? Sure, you can set a limit price for that, but geez, what if it's just a good company? And then you buy in at 125, if it goes below 100, you know it's a good company, so buy more. That would be my suggestion. So here we are at $125. Well, let's put it up against the cash flow metric, smart step number 10, to make sure that we're feeling good about what we got going on here. How you calculate the price to free cash flow is you take the market cap value of the company divided by the total free cash flow amount. So how you find the market cap in Apple is you go over to the summary tab here on Seeking Alpha, and then right here on the right hand side, there's your market cap for this particular company, 2.09 trillion. Whoa, that's a lot. Okay, so 2.09 trillion. And then what I'm gonna do is hop over to the financials tab, click on the cash flow, and then I'm gonna go back down to where we just were, and I'm gonna look once again at our free cash flow. And we're gonna look at leveraged free cash flow in this example. And because this is in millions, we're looking at 60 billion. That means it is trading for 34, roughly, this is a rough estimate, 34.83. So that price to free cash flow for Apple is 34.83. You know, a lower number is typically a better number. What you want is the lower numbers for this price to free cash flow, because that can help indicate if this is a undervalued stock, if this is an opportunity to continue to earn you the most money for your share price for value growth investing. So 34 is not too bad, but I'm gonna give that a yellow light because a lot of people like to aim for 20, 10, You'd almost want to give it a green light, but I, I'm going to give it yellow just because based on your preference and what you're doing for your own particular stock strategy, this could be one or the other, either red or green based, based upon what you want. Hey, that means we've done it. We've done all 10. Congratulations and hats off to you for sticking with me through this entire video. I truly hope it was helpful, but we're not done. Here's the most important part. Let's look at this from an Apple perspective. So after we went through the 10 smart steps, we have a total of eight green lights and two yellow lights, zero red lights. That's pretty darn good when it comes down to this particular stock analysis. So what would I do? 
I would consider, is this worth investing in? Is this a company I understand? Especially based on smart step four, when I'm looking at the news to understand the company a little bit better. Is this something that I would be excited about long term? If not, I might hold on it. Even with all those green lights, I might hold on it because I don't want to invest my money into something I don't understand and I don't believe in. But here's what I need from you. What stock would you like me to analyze next? Which one are you interested in? What are you like, hey, I'd like to see these 10 smart steps in action. I have no problem taking you through the process. Again, not financial advice, but I'll show you a guide that you can take this as a 10 step process to do some research on your own and then consult with your financial advisor if you need to, to make your best next investment purchase. But I hope if anything, you stop chasing the dividend yield, you stop chasing the share price, and we look at it to make sure that that sexy car that we bought is gonna run for years and years to come because you're worth it and you deserve it. So until next time, tap that like button if you enjoyed this video. Here's some other videos that you might find interesting. And until next time, we'll see you on the next video.